Helen Foley Theater in the Sterling Players production of Our Town. In accordance with New York State Fire Code Law, we ask you to take a moment to locate the various exits from the theater, indicated by illuminated exit signs, two in the rear and one on each side of the main floor seating. If you need to exit the theater during the performance, please do so through the rear doors only. At this time, please turn off or silence any cell phones, beepers, or any other noise-making electronic devices. Please be advised that Binghamton schools are smoke-free. Smoking is not allowed in our buildings or on our grounds. Flash photography is not allowed at any time during the performance. Text messaging is also prohibited. Not only is it a distraction for those seated near you, but may interfere with this theater sound system. Refreshments will be on sale during the one 15-minute intermission at the end of Act 1. We ask that you do not return your seats with food, coffee, or soft drinks. Bottled water is allowed inside the Helen Foley Theater. Thank you. Polish 
Presbyterian are over there, and the Baptist is uh, down in the harbor by the river. Now, there's also the post office there, there's the town hall, jail's in the basement. Uh, William Jennings Bryan was the speech from those steps there. And uh, all along Main Street, rows of stores, horse blocks, and, and, and hitching posts in front of them. Um, first automobile's been come along in about five years. It was owned by Banker Cartwright, that's our town British citizen, lives uh, up there in the White House, up there in the hill. And uh, let's see, this is the grocery store, and here is Drug store. Uh, of course, everybody in town looks into these two stores at least once a day. Now, this is our doctor's house. Doc Gibbs. And this is his back door. And uh, now we do have some trellises for those of you who feel you have to have seen them. Yeah, I didn't think so. Now, this is Mrs. Gibbs' garden. That's a corn, peas, beans, heliotrope, hollyhocks, and uh, a lot of burdock. And uh, in those days, our newspaper came out twice a week, Grover's Corner Central, and this is at the Webb's house, and this is Mrs. Webb's garden. And Mrs. Gibbs, uh, only a lot of sunflowers, too. And right here, it's a big butternut tree. A nice town. You know what I mean? There's nobody remarkable that will come out of it, as far as we can tell. I mean, earliest days of the tombstones up there in the cemetery, back in 1660, 1670. And then Romans and Cartwrights and Gibbses and Hirsies, you know, same names that are around here now. Well, as I said, it's early morning. Only lights on in town, or in a cottage in Polish town, where a mother has just given birth to twins. And in the Joe Crow house, where Joe Jr. is getting ready to deliver the morning paper. And down by the depot, Shorty Hopkins is getting ready to flag the 545 for Boston. <laughs> Town folks sleep late. Well, now the day has begun. Here comes Doc Gibbs down Main Street now, coming back from that baby case. And uh, here comes Mrs. Gibbs uh, out to make breakfast. And Doc Gibbs died in 1930. Your husband was named after him. Uh, Mrs. Gibbs died first, long time ago. She was out visiting her daughter, who married an insurance salesman in Canton, Ohio, and died there. Pneumonia. But her body's brought back here. She's, she's up there now in the cemetery with a whole mess of Gibbses and Herseys. Yeah, well, you see, she was Julia Hersey before she married Doc Gibbs in the Congregation Church. In our town, we like to know the facts about everybody. <laughs> and here comes Mrs. Webb, now to make breakfast. And uh, that's Doc Gibbs, got the call to go to Polish Town at half past one this morning. And here comes Joe Crowell, delivered Mr. Webb's Sentinel. Good morning. You want to take it now? Yes, I'll take it. Anybody been sick lately? No, Pharaoh trains over at Polish Town. Joe, I see you're teaching Miss Foster's going to get married. Yeah, to a fellow over in Concord. I have a pair of how do you boys feel about that? Well, I feel it's none of my business, but if a woman's got a teeth, she ought to stay with <laughs> How's your knee, Joe? You look fine in the earth and bad weather, just like you said. What's it telling you today? Good or rain? I'm sorry. Sure? Yes. Do you ever make a mistake? Now, uh, what do you think about that Joe Crow boy there? Awful bright he was. Graduated high school head of his class. So he got a scholarship to Boston to uh, MIT, that is, and graduated head of his class there, too. No written up in the Boston papers at the time. Gonna be a great engineer, Joe was. And then the war broke out. He died. 
die in France. All that education for nothing. For business, he had to pick up a quarrel with the Germans, we can't uh, understand to this day, but it all seemed perfectly clear to us at the time. Thank you. 
Julia Dukes. What are those secondhand furniture men from Boston and Z that started? No. Well, they did for me. And at first I thought they were patients who wanted to see the doctor, but then they roamed their way into my apartment and Myrtle Lev that would be $350 to drive with the high boy from City here. Why, Julia Dukes! They did. That big thing I didn't know where to put it. I almost gave it to Cousin Hester Wilcox.
hard to see the promise in it. 12% cash limit, rest indifferent. And uh, have you any comments, uh, Mr. Webster? Well, it's a very ordinary time of year, ask me. A little better behaved at home, but probably about dollar. But our young people here seem to like it a lot of Now, 90% uh, of them graduating from high school end up settling down to town, even after being off to college. Now, does anyone have any questions of Mr. Webb about our town? I'll hear you about it. Is there much drinking in Grower's Corner? Well, ma'am, I don't know what you'd call much. Saturday nights, the farm hands meet down at El Rey Green on Stable. They all have some. We've got one or two town drunks, but they're always having remarks every time the band comes to town. No, ma'am, I would say liquor's really found in the home here. Except in the medicine chest, you know. Right good for a snake play. Always blood. Is there no one in town aware of social injustice? Uh, you step forward, please, so we can hear you. Now, what would you like to ask, uh, Mr. Webb? Is there no one in town aware of social injustice and industrial inequality? Ah, uh, yes, everybody is. Something terrible. Seems they're always talking about who's rich and who's poor. Then why don't they do something about it? Well, I don't know. I guess we're all hungry, just like everybody else. They find a way to live. Sensible and diligent person, <coughs> and that the lazy and quarrelsome can think about it. But in the meantime, we do all we can to take care of those who can't help themselves. Those who can't be leave alone. Now, uh, are there any other questions? Mr. Webb? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Webb, is there any culture or love of beauty in your corner? Well, ma'am, very much. Now, now, not in the sense you need. Come to think of it, we got one or two girls out of the high school commencement who play piano, but they ain't very happy about it. No, ma'am. I wouldn't say there's much culture here, but maybe it's the time to tell you we've got a lot of pleasure in common. We like seeing the sun come through the mountains in the morning. We don't pay a good deal of attention to the birds, as we all know it's not. And we watch the change of the seasons, but now those other things, you're right, ma'am. There ain't much. We've got Robinson Crusoe in the Bible and Handel's Largo. We know those. And Whistler's one of them. That's just about as far as we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now we'll get back to the town. It's uh, early afternoon, and uh, all 2,642 have had their lunch, and the dishes have all been washed. And uh, children are back to school, all the mother about the school building. And all along Main Street, there's uh, a few buggies with the horses dozing. <laughs> Kind of an early afternoon calm about the town. Do you remember how it was? And uh, Don Gibbs is in his office, tapping the people, making them say, ah. And uh, Ed West cut his lawn. One man in ten thinks it's a privilege to put his own lawn on. Thanks for the talk, Emily. Good afternoon, Mrs. Webb. Oh, good afternoon, George. 
them even if you try. Now again, Sopranos. Thank you. 
No one can do well. It's getting better. I've been in that choir twice as long as you have, and it doesn't happen nearly so often. Wow. I hate to go to bed on a night like this. Oh, but if I don't get home, those children will be up till all hours. Yes, most of the time. 
actually in the first act, uh, there'll be